In this message, we want to deal with the topic of hellfire. There are many people who believe that hell will burn forever and ever and ever and ever and ever because of some scriptures in the Bible that say everlasting fire, eternal fire, unquenchable fire. And we will deal with this from the word of God. And we will see if hellfire will burn forever and ever as many think it will. Well, in the Bible, what many fail to realize is that there are three definitions for hell. How many? There are three definitions for for hell. The first definition we'll talk about that talks about hell meaning the grave. In the Greek, it means Hades, which stands for the grave. So hell can mean the grave. That's one definition. Another definition in the Bible, hell can mean a dark place. And another definition in the Bible, three definitions, hell can mean a place of burning or a place of fire, which many are acquainted with, which is only the last one, which is the place of burning and the place of fire. But let's see these other two definitions that hell can mean a, uh, the grave and hell can also mean a dark place or a place of darkness. And hell number three can mean the place of burning, which we see the lake of fire and all these other fires mentioned in the Bible, eternal fire, everlasting fire, unquenchable fire, and so on. So number one, let's see that hell can represent the grave. As we go in our Bibles to Psalms, let's go to Psalm 16, Psalms 16, and let's see what the Bible says in verse 10. Psalm 16 and verse 10. Psalm 16 is actually a prophecy of Christ because here we see what David said in Psalm 16 is what Jesus said when he was on this earth, what was said about Jesus. The Bible says here, Psalm 16 and verse 10. Psalm 16 and verse 10. This shows us that hell was like unto the grave. Watch this. It says, for thou wilt not leave my soul in hell, neither wilt thou suffer thine holy one to see corruption. The Bible says, you will not leave my soul in hell, neither will you suffer the holy one. Who's the holy one? The holy one, that's Jesus, to see corruption. Did Jesus go to hell? What hell did Jesus go to? Did he go to the place of burning? which is for the wicked, which was prepared for Satan and his angels. If you read Matthew chapter 25, did Jesus go to that hell? Did he go to a place of darkness or did he go to the tomb or to the grave? Let's go in our Bibles now to the book of Acts. We're, we're at, asking these questions and we're letting the Bible answer the questions. Acts chapter 2. The Bible says in Acts chapter 2 and verse 27. Notice Acts chapter 2 verse 27. It says this, Because thou wilt not leave my soul in hell, neither wilt thou suffer thine holy one to see corruption. Drop down now with, with me to verse 31. It says, he seeing this before speak of the resurrection of Christ, that his soul, that Christ was not left in hell, neither his flesh did see corruption. Now question, did Jesus go into a place of darkness we're not, we don't see from the Bible where he went to a place of darkness. Did Jesus go into the place of burning? We don't see from the Bible where Jesus went to a place of burning. So according to Psalm 16 and verse 10, and according to Acts chapter 2, verse 27 and 31, Jesus went to hell. Which hell? He went to the grave. The word Hades is translated in the Greek as the grave, which can be translated also as hell. So hell, the grave, Jesus went to the grave, Jesus went to the tomb. And so hell in the Bible can represent the tomb. It can represent the grave. It can represent a place of darkness. It can also represent a third definition, a place of burning. And Jesus went not to the place of darkness. Jesus went not to the place of burning. Jesus went to the tomb. Jesus went to the grave. Go with me in your Bible to the book of 1 Corinthians chapter 15. 1 Corinthians 15, here we're seeing from the word of God in 1 Corinthians 15 and verse 55 that hell can be translated as the grave. 1 Corinthians 15 verse 55 says, O death, where is thy sting? O grave, where is thy victory? The word grave here is translated from the Greek from the Hebrew from the Greek which is Hades and Hades can be translated as hell or the grave so Christ went to that hell went to the grave and he did not stay in the grave or in that hell he resurrected from that grave from that 
hell. Is that clear? So hell can be translated as the grave. Another definition, which was the second, was the place of darkness. So let's go in our Bibles to the book of 2 Peter. 2 Peter chapter 2. So I hope we see from the word of God as we go to 2 Peter chapter 2, that when Jesus said, Thou will not leave my soul in hell, he wasn't talking about the place of burning. He was talking about the grave. So when we read it, we can say, You will not leave my soul in the grave. But you will not suffer your Holy One to see corruption. Christ rose from the grave. Is that clear? And the Bible says the second definition of hell is a place of darkness. 2 Peter chapter 2 and verse 4, it says this, And if God spared not the angels that sin, but cast them down to hell. Now, we're talking about the angels of heaven. When God kicked them out of heaven, the Bible says they were spared not the angels that sinned, but cast them down to hell. Which hell? It says, cast them down to hell and delivered them into the chains of darkness to be reserved unto judgment. So hell can represent the grave in the Bible, and hell can also represent a place of darkness, chains of darkness. The angels were cast down to hell, not into the grave, not into the place of burning as yet. They were cast into the dark Darkness. Is that clear? So darkness can represent hell. So number one, the grave can represent hell. Number two, darkness can represent hell. And the third definition, which many know of, which I don't have to have a Bible text for it because it's all over the Bible and many know it, is the place of burning, the lake of fire, the everlasting fire, unquenchable fire. This fire is known as hell. So let's see from the word of God. What is this fire? Because let's deal with hell, this hell's fire, but first we're going to deal with the grave because I want to show that this grave is where we will all go. This hell, this first hell, is which we will all go, which is the grave, before anyone gets into the lake of fire. And by the way, we don't have to go into the lake of fire. We have no choice to go to the first hell, which is the grave. We have no choice. We all will go to that grave. However, we can choose not to go to the place of burning, the place of fire. Is that clear? The Bible says in the book of Job, let's go to Job, Job 31, Job 31. We're going in the Bible to the book of Job, Job 31, uh, Job chapter 30 rather, Job chapter 30 and verse 23. Job chapter 30 and verse 23. I want to give you Bible for everything that is talked about here. Job 30 and verse 23. The word of God says this. For I know that death, I know that, that thou will bring me to death and to the house appointed for all the living. So the Bible says there is a house appointed for all the living. Everyone that is living will go to the, this house. What is the house that all of us will go to after we're done with our life that everyone is appointed to go to? Let's go in our Bible to the book of Job or in the book of Job. This time we're going to Job 17. Job 17, it says, you will bring me to death to the house appointed to all living. What is the house appointed? And Job 17 and verse 13, Job 17, 13 says, if I wait, the grave is mine house. That will bring me to death to the house appointed to all living. If I wait, the grave is mine house. The Bible says, I made my bed in the darkness. So the Bible says that this darkness, this grave is the house which we will go. We will go into the grave. We will go into this death. We will go into the darkness. We will go into this darkness, this grave that we will all go to after we all die. We all will go to the grave. And Christ, as he resurrected from that grave, we also, if we are faithful to the Lord, will rise in the first resurrection. Or if we're unfaithful to the Lord, by God's grace, we won't be. But those who did not accept Christ will rise from the grave into the, not the first, but the second resurrection. We must choose the first. Let us give our hearts to Christ now while we are alive. So this grave, which we all go to, this house, is the house for all the living. This house is for all those who are appointed who are living. This house is called the what? It is called the grave. If I wait, the grave is mine house. And let's keep studying because this house, this grave, is the same thing as we saw in Acts chapter 2. 
where Jesus said, they will not suffer my soul to be in hell. So we will all go to this grave. We will all go to the grave, to this hell. Is that clear? The Bible teaches that. But we will all resurrect by the grace of God, either the first or second resurrection. The Bible says when we die, the breath goes back to God. Ecclesiastes chapter 12. Let's go there. Ecclesiastes 12. When we die. The breath goes back to God and the body returns back to the earth as we discovered in our last study. Ecclesiastes chapter 12 and verse 17, the word of uh, verse 7. Ecclesiastes chapter 12, verse 7, it says this. Then shall the dust, that's the body, the body return to the earth as it was. And the spirit, we saw that the spirit was the breath of God. We found this in Job 33 verse 4. We found this in Job 27 verse 3. It says, the spirit of God was in my nostrils, the breath of life. It says, then the spirit shall return unto God who gave it. So when we die, the body goes into the grave. The body goes to the grave. We will go to that place, that, that place of, of the grave, that hell, that Hades, that grave. But we will resurrect when Christ shall come and give us immortal, immortal life, immortality. We saw that in our last study. The Bible says here that we all will go to the grave. Let's go in our Bible to the book of Psalms. Psalms 89. Psalm 89. And let's look at verse 48. Psalm 89. And verse 48. So we will all go to this first hell, which is the grave. Is that clear? We will all go there. But we must receive the life of Christ now and be faithful in Christ now so that he can resurrect us and not leave our soul in hell, in the grave. Is that clear? Psalm 89. The Bible says in verse 48, it says this. What man is he that liveth? And shall not see death. The question is asked, who is alive that will not see death, that will not see the grave? It says, shall he, shall he deliver his soul from the hand of the grave? Selah. So the question is asked, shall not God deliver our souls from the grave, from this hell, from this Hades? So God will deliver our souls from the grave. We will not be there forever. It is just a house appointed for us after we are dead. And that is the place of hell that Christ went to when he was in the grave. And the Bible says that in 1 Thessalonians chapter 4 and verse 16, it says, For the Lord himself, I want to go there, For the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of the archangel, and with the trump of God, and the dead in Christ shall rise first. Then we which are alive and remain shall be caught up to meet the Lord in the air, the Bible says, to, to caught up together with, with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air, and so shall we ever be with the Lord. So here we're seeing when Christ will come, when Christ will come the second time, he's going to take those out of the grave, out of this hell, out of this Hades, so that he will not leave our soul in hell. John 14, Jesus said in verse 1, verse 2, verse 3, he says, Let not your heart be troubled. Ye believe in God, believe ye also in me. In my Father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you. I go to prepare a place for you. And if I go to prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you unto myself, that where I am, there you may be also. Is that clear? So there where Christ is, we will be there also. So he will take those out of the hell, out of the grave. He will not suffer us to stay in the grave. He will not suffer us to stay in the grave as he, Christ was not in the grave for long, in that hell for long. He will lift us up out of that hell, out of the grave, and we will see Jesus and he will receive us to be with him where he is. Is that clear? So the first hell, which many don't want to think about is the grave and that is the place where we will be and the hell for darkness is where the angels are where they are reserved until the day of judgment and now we see the place of hell which is a place of burning which many are quick to talk about which we will deal with right now this everlasting hell this everlasting burning after christ comes and takes us with him we spend the millennium with jesus at the end of the millennium then the wicked are raised and the bible says they will be devoured or destroyed by this hell fire let's go in our bible to the book of revelation revelation chapter 20 and notice what it says here revelation chapter 20 revelation chapter 20 and let's look at verse number 14 revelation chapter 20 verse 14 notice this hell fire it says revelation 20 14 the death and death and hell 
And this hell is the grave, as we've been studying previously. Death and hell were cast into the lake of fire, which is the place of burning. This hell fire, which many are so uh, knowledgeable about. It says, this is the second death. And what whosoever was not found written in the book of life was cast into the lake of fire. So let's study this lake of fire. The Bible says that even the grave will be cast into the lake of fire. It will be completely destroyed. So let's talk about this lake of fire, this everlasting fire in the Bible, this place of burning, this eternal fire. Will it burn forever and ever? And how long will the wicked burn in this hell fire? How long will, will the wicked burn in hell's fire? Let's see from the Bible how long the wicked will burn in hell's fire. Let's go to Matthew chapter 10. Matthew chapter 10, we're seeing from the word of God, how long will the wicked, those who rise in the second resurrection, how long will the wicked burn in hell's fire? Matthew chapter 10, verse 28, it says this, fear not them which kill the body, but are not able to kill the soul, but rather fear him that is able to destroy both soul and and body in hell. So how long will the wicked burn forever and ever? The Bible says until they are destroyed. It says destroy both soul and body and in hell. So the Bible says the wicked will be destroyed. The wicked will be completely destroyed. So that shows us that the wicked will not live forever and ever and ever in hell's fire. The Bible says that the wicked will be destroyed in hell's fire. Is that clear? There's no teaching in the Bible that says the wicked will live forever and ever in hell's fire. The Bible says they, they will be destroyed, both soul and body. As a matter of fact, let's go in our Bibles to the book of Malachi chapter 4. Malachi chapter 4, we're seeing from the word of God. In the book of Malachi, Malachi chapter 4, the last book of the Old Testament, that those who are wicked, those who lived for the devil, those who did not surrender their lives to Christ, will be completely destroyed when they are in hellfire. Malachi 4, verse 1, it says this, For behold, the day cometh that shall burn as an oven, and all the proud, yea, and all that do wickedly shall be stubble, and the day that cometh shall burn them up, burn them up, burn them up, say the Lord of hosts, that shall, it shall not leave them neither root nor branch. So the Bible says the wicked will be burnt up. If you have a piece of paper, you want to light it with a, you light it with a, a, a lighter, that that paper will burn into ashes until there's no more, no more left of it. People burn cigarettes, people burn so many different things. We see people, houses and, and things burn. And when it burns, it burns until it is no more. And that is what will happen to the wicked, those who hold on to sin, those who did not surrender their hearts to Christ. The Bible says they will burn till they are destroyed. They will be burned up completely until they are ashes upon the ground. Is that clear? Root and branch will be destroyed. Root meaning Satan. If you have a root and you have branches, you have a tree. The branches come from the root. The fruit come from the root. The leaves come from the root. The root is Satan. Satan is the cause of sin. Satan is the one that began to practice sin. Satan is the one who first committed sin. And all of his followers, the branches, all of his followers, root and branch, Satan and his followers will burn and be destroyed. The Bible teaches that even Satan will be destroyed in hell's fire. Let's go in our Bible to the book of Revelation chapter 20. Revelation chapter 20. So even Satan will be destroyed in hell's fire. Revelation chapter 20. The Bible says in verse number 9. Revelation chapter 20, verse number 9, it says this. And they went up on the breath of the earth and compassed the camp of the saints about and, be and the beloved city. And fire came down from God out of heaven and devoured them. So the Bible says fire came down from God out of heaven and did what? It devours, devours them. If I have food in front of my face and I want to devour that food, I will devour, I will eat that food until it is destroyed, demolished, gone, abolished. 
Is that clear? When you eat and you devour food, that is how the wicked will be destroyed, devoured, completely demolished, gone. The Bible says that all that rise up in the second resurrection will be devoured and destroyed, and even Satan himself will be destroyed. Verse number 10 says, The devil that deceived them was cast into the lake of fire and brimstone where the beast the false prophet are and they shall be tormented day and night forever and ever and here people say but there you go preacher you're contradicting yourself the bible says that satan will burn forever and ever Therefore, that therefore, hell fire must go on forever and ever, and those who burn forever and ever will not be destroyed, but they live forever and ever. But what does forever and ever mean? What does forever mean? Let's go in our Bible to the book of Jonah. Jonah chapter 2. We're letting the Bible speak for itself. The Bible says that Satan will be devoured or destroyed or be cast into the lake of fire forever and ever. And notice what this says. J Jonah chapter 2. What does forever and ever mean? We're going in our Bible to the book of Jonah. Jonah chapter 2 and let's notice what the Bible says once we get there in the book of Jonah chapter 2 see the Bible says that when Jonah when he went into the belly of the whale and Jonah chapter 2 that Jonah as he was there he was in the belly of the whale here it is Jonah chapter 2 and he was falling in that in the water forever notice what it says here Jonah 2 and verse 6 it says, I went down to the bottoms of the mountains. The earth and her bars was about me forever. Yet hast thou brought up my life from corruption. O Lord, my God. Jonah says he was falling in the, in, in the water, in the belly of the whale forever. But God allowed him to be brought from corruption. It felt like a long time, but it was not a long time. It was only for a certain time period. And forever only means a certain time period. Is that clear? The Bible says in 1 Samuel chapter 1. Let's go there. In 1 Samuel chapter 1. The Bible says in 1 Samuel chapter 1 that there was a woman named Hannah who dedicated her child before the Lord. And the Bible says she would dedicate him to the Lord forever. And the Bible says forever just means as long as the child shall live. 1 Samuel chapter 1 verse 22 it says this. And Hannah went up. She was dedicating Samuel the prophet to the Lord. And Hannah went not up. For she said unto her husband, I will not go up until the child be weaned. Then I will bring him that he may appear before the Lord and there abide forever. So that she said, I'm going to present my child to, to abide before God forever. And verse number 28 tells us how long forever is. Verse 28 says, therefore, also I have lent him to the Lord as long as he liveth. He shall be lent to the Lord, and he worshiped the Lord there. So the Bible says that she was going to bring her child before the Lord forever. And the Bible says forever means as long as a child lives. When two young people in, in, in elementary school pass around some love, love notes or letters, they may say, Tommy and Jessica, forever and ever, or forever and ever. Does that mean that they will love each other forever? Or does that mean as long as they live? As long as they live. So we know that forever, according to the word of God, does not mean as, as, as long as, as just forever and ever, having no end. Forever means as long as you live according to the word of God. Is that clear? So the Bible says that the wicked will be destroyed. And yes, it is forever. But forever just means, according to the word of God, as long as we live. We saw this in Jonah 2. We saw this in 1 Samuel chapter 1, 22 and verse 28. So here we're seeing that this, this forever, this long time period is only a limited period. As a matter of fact, let's go in our Bibles to the book of Matthew. Matthew 25. Matthew 25. The Bible says in Matthew 25 and verse 46. Notice what it says here. Matthew 25 and verse 46. The Bible teaches in Matthew 25 and verse 46 that hell's fire is not everlasting punishing. Hell's fire is everlasting punishment, meaning that the punishment will come to an end. It is not punishing. It's not ongoing forever and ever. It's everlasting punishment. The Bible says in Matthew chapter 25 and verse 46, it says, and these shall go away into everlasting punishment. 
but the righteous into life eternal. So those who accept Christ, there's only life in Christ. The Bible says Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life. There's only life in Christ. And those who accept and live for Christ will have eternal life when they get to heaven and abide with him forever. The righteous, but the wicked will not be in hells forever, having eternal life meaning. But the Bible says they will have an everlasting punishment. Not their punishing, their punishment, meaning they will be completely destroyed. Their punishment will show that they will have their reward. They will be completely destroyed when Christ shall come. Let's look at the, the meaning of everlasting punishment, because the Bible says everlasting. Let's see some examples from the Word of God. Let's go to Matthew 25, verse 41. It says this, Matthew 25, verse 41. Then shall he say also unto them, On the left hand, depart from me, ye curse into, into everlasting fire, prepared for the devil and his angels. The Bible says that this hell's fire is everlasting fire. What does everlasting fire mean? Does it mean it's going to burn forever and ever and ever? And is there an example in the Bible of a place that had everlasting or eternal fire? Let's go in our Bible to the book of Jude. Going in our Bible to the book of Jude, right before the book of Revelation. The book of Jude, Jude verse 7. The word of God says this. Jude verse 7. It says this. Even as Sodom and Gomorrah... And the cities round about them in like manner, giving themselves, giving themselves over to fornication and going after strange flesh are set forth for an example, suffering the vengeance of eternal fire. So the Bible says Sodom and Gomorrah is an example of eternal fire. Sodom and Gomorrah is an example of everlasting fire. And according to the Bible, Sodom and Gomorrah did not burn forever and ever. Sodom and Gomorrah is not burning today. The Bible says Sodom and Gomorrah turned into ashes. We find this in the book of Peter. Let's go there. Going in our Bible to the book of 2 Peter. 2 Peter chapter 2, verse 6. That Sodom and Gomorrah is burned to ashes. 2 Peter 2, verse 6. It says this. And turning the cities of Sodom and Gomorrah into ashes condemn with them an, an overthrow, making them an, an example unto those that should after live ungodly. So those who live ungodly will be put into that everlasting fire that Sodom and Gomorrah once had, but Sodom and Gomorrah is not burning today. The Bible says that they are turned into ashes as we see fire burn things to Chris and turns to ashes. So it is that this everlasting fire prepared for Satan and his angels, which the wicked will go into, the Bible says it will turn them also into ashes. This is an example of the fire that will take place in the last days when Christ shall come. Is that clear? It's everlasting punishment again. It is not everlasting punishing. Well, people say, what about unquenchable fire. The Bible says that this is unquenchable fire. Let's go there. Matthew chapter, Mark rather, Mark chapter 9. Mark chapter 9, we're seeing from the word of God. Many people say, but there is unquenchable fire. And Jesus said out of his own mouth, it is unquenchable fire, meaning the fire will not be quenched. No water can put it out. The Bible says in Mark chapter 9 and verse 43, it says this. Mark 9 and verse 43, it says this. And if thy hand offend thee, cut it off. It is better for thee to enter into life maimed than having two hands and go into hell, into the fire which shall never be quenched. So the Bible says it's better for you to cut things out of your life than to have these things, these sinful things, and then to be cast into the fire that shall not be quenched or unquenchable fire. Is there an example in the Bible of unquenchable fire that came upon a city in the, in the Bible times, in the Bible days, that that fire is still around today or that fire has gone out? Let's go in our Bible to the book of Jeremiah. Jeremiah 17. Going in our Bible to the book of Jeremiah, Jeremiah chapter 17 and verse number 27. Jeremiah 17 and verse 27. The Bible says this, Jeremiah 17, verse 27, it says, And but if ye will not hearken unto me to hallow the Sabbath day, 
not to bear a burden even entering into the gates of Jerusalem on the Sabbath day, then I will kindle fire in the gates thereof, and it shall devour the places of Jerusalem, and it shall not be quenched. So the Bible says that the fire that took place in the days of Jerusalem, when Jerusalem was being destroyed in AD 70, when Jerusalem was destroyed, fire was there, fire, unquenchable fire, is, is Jerusalem still being destroyed today? Or did Jerusalem was completely destroyed and devoured by the fire? Jerusalem was completely destroyed and devoured by that fire. So here we're seeing from the word of God that unquenchable fire does go out. Here we see from the word of God, everlasting fire does go out. Is that clear? This fire will go out according to the word of God. Let's go in our Bible to the book of Second Peter chapter 2. 2 Peter chapter 2. And notice what the Bible says in 2 Peter chapter 2. So the Bible says that the fire will go out. And when will this hell's fire start? 2 Peter chapter 2 verse 9. This hell fire will start on judgment day, the Bible says. 2 Peter chapter 2 verse 9, it says this. The Lord knoweth how to deliver the godly out of temptations and to reserve the unjust unto the day of judgment to be punished, everlasting punishment. So the day of judgment is the day that God has reserved for this everlasting punishment. The day of what? The day of judgment. Second Peter chapter three now in verse seven, second Peter chapter three, verse seven, it says, but as the heavens and the earth, which are now by the same word, are kept and stored, reserved unto fire against the day of judgment and perdition of ungodly men. So when will this hell's fire start? The Bible says it will start on the day of judgment. And when is the day of judgment? Let's go in our Bibles to the book of Revelation chapter 22. Let's go there. Revelation 22. Revelation 22 in verse 11, it says this. And behold, I come quickly, and my reward is with me, to give every man according to his work shall be. Verse 11 says, when Christ comes, he comes with rewards. And the Bible says in verse 11, when Christ comes, he does a work of judgment. It says, he that is unjust, let him be unjust still. He that is filthy, let him be filthy still. He that is righteous, let him be righteous still. He that is holy, let him be holy still. When Christ judges, when he says, if you are holy, remain that way. If you are filthy, remain that way. He will do a work of judgment when he comes and give his reward. So when Christ comes, that is when hell fire will begin. Let's go back to Revelation chapter 20. And this is not the second coming of Christ, but when Christ comes the third time. Christ came the first time as a baby. The second time he comes to take the righteous with him to glory. And the third time he will come when the righteous are with him in the millennium. Study the millennium. We have a video on that. And when Christ comes back, he will come with his righteous saints. The wicked are resurrected. The third coming of Christ. The righteous are with Christ. And that is when hellfire will begin upon those who resurrect in the second resurrection. The Bible says in Revelation chapter 20 and verse Number nine, it says this, and they went up on the breadth of the earth and compassed the camp of the saints about and the beloved city. This is the second resurrection and fire came down from God out of heaven and devoured them. And verse 10 says the devil that was the sea was cast into the lake of fire. So here we see that, the, the, that as the second resurrection comes. Those who are in the second resurrection, they were gathering around this city and the fire came down from heaven and devoured and destroyed them. This is the second resurrection. The Bible says in verse 5, Revelation 20, the rest of the dead live not again until the thousand years were finished. This is the first resurrection. So the first resurrection is when the thousand years would begin where the righteous are taken to heaven with Christ. But the Bible says the rest of the dead live not again until the thousand years were finished. So the first resurrection is when the thousand years would start. The second resurrection is when the thousand years would finish. At the end of the thousand years, when the righteous are in heaven with Christ, at the second resurrection is when they would be resurrected and fire would come down from God out of heaven and destroy and devour the wicked. Is that clear? So here we're seeing from the word of God that we are seeing that judgment will begin 
upon this earth. Now, how can we escape this experience? We don't want to be cast into the lake of fire. The Bible says that God did not prepare hell's fire for you. And Matthew 25 and verse 41, it says that hell's fire was prepared for the devil and his angels. Hell's fire was prepared for the devil and his angels. He says, depart from me, you curse into everlasting fire prepared for the devil and his angels. It was not prepared for us. God has prepared another place for us. And John chapter 14, verse 1 to 3, Jesus says, I go to prepare a place for you. That place is in heaven. We all have a place prepared in heaven that Christ has prepared for us. And in order for us to have that place he prepared for us in heaven, we must have our lives prepared to meet Jesus when he shall come. And the only way we can have our lives prepared is if we find ourselves without spot or wrinkle or any such thing as we get ready for Christ to come. We must confess every known sin, forsake every known sin, confess and begin to pray and plead for the outpouring of the Holy Spirit in our lives. Ask God to consume sin from our hearts and on, on, on our lives. Ask God to remove wickedness from our soul. For the Bible says God is a consuming fire. He wants to destroy sin in our hearts, in our lives. Let him destroy sin from our lives. Let's live in the fiery presence of God now so that we can live with God's presence there. You know, it was the tree three Hebrew boys in Daniel chapter three. They were cast into the fire and the Bible says that it was one like the son of man. Jesus was standing with them in the fire. Only those who are standing with Jesus now can live with Jesus for all eternity in heaven and be prepared to stand even in the midst of fire. But those who are running from Christ now, those who have no desire for prayer and the study of God's word, will be those who will be destroyed when Christ shall come. Which group will you be a part of? Do you love the Lord? Are you studying his word? Are you pleading for an experience with his Holy Spirit? Are you daily asking God to come into your heart to prepare you to stand with him when he shall come? Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we see from the word of God that you are going to come and that the wicked will be destroyed, but that you have prepared a place for all of us to go. And none of us who are wicked need be destroyed if we just accept you into our hearts and allow you to live your life through us. Help us, O oh Father, to choose you. Choose this day that we will choose to serve the Lord. Help us to make it our experience, we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. My brothers and my sisters, if you receive the blessing from hearing this message, please share this message. The Bible clearly says, that those who will be saved in the last days are those who surrender their hearts to Christ. Those who are wicked will rise in the second resurrection, and that is when hell's fire will start at the end of the world, at the end of the millennium. Let us be prepared not to be those in the second resurrection, but should we die to be a part of the first, to be ready for Christ to come and to stand in the last days. May the Lord bless and keep you. Maranatha.